video discusses topics that may be disturbing to some viewers. It discusses cases of missing and or murdered victims whose case was solved using forensic genetic genealogy. Viewer discretion is advised. Kitsap County Sheriff's Office responded to the scene of a body found murdered in Olala, Washington in August of 1995. Olala, Washington is roughly an hour drive from Seattle. A passerby had found the murdered remains of a female in a ditch alongside a portion of a road. The female was identified using her fingerprints. She was identified as Patricia Lorraine Barnes, a 61-year-old whose last known residence was in the Seattle area. It would be there in Seattle where she would be last seen by people only days before her body was discovered. Patricia did not have any ties to the Kitsap County area which made the case more confusing. When her body was found she had been shot twice in the head and she was found unclothed in the ditch with only a bit of a sleeping bag covering her. Her case was classified as homicide. The crime scene where her body was found had a large amount of evidence. As the years passed there have roughly been 130 individual evidence items collected. Unfortunately, even with that, the Kitsap County Sheriff's Office plus the added help from the Seattle Police Department, the case was still left unsolved. During the course of the investigation, it was considered that Patricia could have been one of the Spokane serial killer's victims. However, that serial killer who later was identified as Robert Lee Yates was determined through military records that he was too far away from the area at the time that Patricia was murdered. April 2018, the Sheriff's Office of Kitsap County reopened the case as part of their renewed focus on cold cases. As part of reopening the case, the investigators reviewed various original documents, interviewed the original detectives on the case and the photographs of the scene. It was then that they began to explore DNA testing tools to help and try and find any leads on suspects. Evidence from the scene were submitted both to the State of Washington Crime Lab as well as two other private ones outside of the State of Washington. While that was processing in August of 2020, they acted on earlier information that a certain individual was the last person to be with Patricia, however that person's DNA and the DNA from the scene did not match. After that disappointment, additional DNA submissions from the crime scene led investigators to a single unknown male. That unknown male had DNA at three different spots at the crime scene. That DNA profile was ran through the combined DNA index system, which includes DNA profiles collected from crime scene evidence, convicted offenders, felony arrestees, missing persons, and unidentified human remains. They concluded this unknown male had to be the murderer due to the source of the DNA and where the DNA was on the victim's body. Kitsap County Sheriff's Office teamed up with Othram Labs to use forensic-grade genome sequencing to see if they could find out more information on this unknown male. Forensic genealogists took the information and were able to use forensic and genealogical information from the unknown male's DNA making it possible to produce a lead to identify the murderer. In December of 2021, the genealogists gave them that name. With that information, detectives conducted a search and they found that the lead suspect had died in September of 2016 from being electrocuted while putting up a TV antenna and it hitting a power line. However, a retained sample from this person's autopsy was provided to the Kitsap County Sheriff's Office to be tested against the unknown male. Early in 2022, the Washington State Patrol Crime Lab in Seattle did a comparison. The following month, the crime lab concluded that the DNA was from Douglas Keith Crone. Unfortunately, the murderer in this case had died prior to being held accountable for their actions. Douglas Keith Crone had a criminal history in Washington State and at one time was ordered by the courts to give a sample of DNA for the combined DNA index system. However, he left the state and it was never given. Had he complied, it would have helped find him a lot sooner. However, I am glad that now Patricia's family can finally feel like their loved one got some type of justice because they know her killer can't harm anyone else. Because